Scene transitions are non-existent in this episode. Okay, I think Yuri tosses that one over there. Let's try not to be too rambunctious, okay? I'm sure we'll all be glad to see Yuri and give her all this stuff, but a bunch of loud shenanigans is probably the last thing she needs. Can we do quiet shenanigans? Well, let's try to keep the shenaniganry to a minimum. I'm pretty sure that's not a rib, but I'll let it slide. She didn't say exactly what she was sick with, but she seemed surprised that we were coming. She's probably at least sick enough to need some rest. You texted her earlier, then. Yeah, it seemed smart to let her know we were coming. Speaking of which... Hey, we're here! 60 second warning! Just a moment, still getting dressed. Give me like three minutes. Question. How does being sick even work? Like, are we computing individual microorganisms infecting- Are we computing individual microorganisms infecting us? Or is some sickness variable in our character file just randomly turned on? Not the first one, mostly. The simulation rig up we use simulates microorganisms. It doesn't simulate millions and billions of them down to the individual. We don't have access to that kind of processing power. But we simulate on a rough prob prob probabilistic, is that word, level, the behavior of microorganisms as large groups. Like if you're sick and you touch your hand without washing it, we can simulate that. And if you then touch a doorknob, we can also simulate that. And then if someone else touches a doorknob, etc, etc. And then we can determine, based on the load of contagion you've come into contact with, your probability of getting infected. If you do, then the engine starts automatically adjusting your curve file to reflect the changes. The symptoms will depend heavily on how- Blah blah, she says Natsuki. The symptoms will depend heavily on how the microorganism causing it is classified and- Sheesh, I get the point already! Should we go up? It's still pretty cold outside. Yeah, let's head up! The group walks up and Manga knocks on the door. Hello, everyone. How comes it that the club- Wait, how comes it that the club has nothing better to do? <laughs> okay. Then visit a poor sick shut-in. Uh, Sayori won the drawing to see what we get to do today, and she decided we had to come visit you. Monica told you this, Yuri. Oh, I know. Monica told you! Thank you, Yuri. And that was very sweet of you, Sayori. I don't know why you asked in the first place. It just seemed like maybe you guys would have better things to do as well. There's nothing better than making sure that our super awesomest friend is feeling alright! Thank you, everyone. Why don't you guys come on in and... And... Oh, wait. What is all this stuff? We went shopping for you. We may have overdone it slightly. I see. Well, come on in. We can put that stuff in the kitchen. I'm actually glad you guys are here. I found something kind of cool today that I'd like to show you. This way. Crackers, because you can't have soup without crackers. Even miso soup, apparently. Oh, and the most important soup related thing. A bunch of cayenne pepper. That way you can clear your sinus and start putting it in the soup. Thanks, Siori. In fact, I don't really have any congestion. Oh! Well, then I guess you'll just have lots of pepper whenever you need it. Sarah and I also got you these flowers, and the whole club signed this card for you. Gosh, you guys really did too much. I'm not even that sick. Yuri takes the card and reads it. We all miss you very much. We wish you a very speedy recovery. Let's see. I love you! Come back soon so that we can be in wisdom! <laughs> My all your wisdoms! Heart, Siori! Glad isn't the same at all without you. It's much nicer when you're here, your dear friend Monica. Feel very soon, Natsuki. Thank you so much, you guys. Let me go get a face for the flowers so I can keep them fresh. In the meantime, MC, come here and let's start cooking up this soup. I, uh, I have no idea how to make this soup. Well, neither do I. <laughs> this is going to go splendidly. Well, this is going to be a disaster. Come <laughs> on, with your help, I know we can do it. Plus their, in er, plus their instructions on the sign! Just follow the instructions, it'll be safe. Alright, alright, let's start. We'll probably need to boil some water. So this is Yuri's bedroom. It's way more normal than I expected. Ah, oh, the flowers look lovely on the shelf. Hi, Natsuki. Hi, Yuri, I like your room! Thank you. And thank you for the tea you got me. I'll get very good use out of it. Mm. Mm. Is everything alright? You seem a little withdrawn today. Yeah, you, everything's okay. I just have a small problem having to do with, um, having to do with the popular girls at school. You know how that can be. I certainly do. Do you want any help dealing with them, Natsuki? Those people don't exactly like me, of course. But they do fear me. <laughs> so if you think there's anything I can do, let me know. No popular girl should get to bully me for my friends and get away with it so long as I can do anything about it. Nah, no, that's okay. I'll take care of it. 
You know me, I'm a tough cookie. If those girls keep messing with me, it'll be their asses. <laughs> Come down, guys. It's time to write some poems. Let's go. Mm. Oh, I feel like shit. Yeah, you should. Mm. Okay, everyone. See, I said we write poems while we're here, so we'll write some poems. Although we should probably write some short poems given the absence of any preparation time. How about haiku? Those are ultra short, but they still require a lot of thought and artistry, right? Good idea! Everyone break up and write a haiku about whatever you want. Let's come back here in 15 minutes, okay? Now, that just leaves a small matter of my poem. Haiku have never been very easy for me. I'd really like to stretch out a bit with my poems and use the page if it wasn't already obvious. But haiku really forced you to get across your point in an ultra, ultra brief format. To be honest, I'm having trouble coming up with any good ideas that fit in the 575 structure. Well, I have a few ideas, but I'm not sure which of them would work best. I can't help you with this, Monica. Why are you telling me? Maybe you'd like to help? No, I can't. What should I write about? Oh, I get to tell you. Something abstract and ominous. Hmm. Nah, I love st stereotypical space. Food is too... banal, dare I say. Let's go with something abstract and ominous. I guess I've built up something of a reputation in my poems. <laughs> I'm not a person who normally thinks about horror and dark stuff non-stop, you know. I'm just a normal person in a really weird situation. But writing abstract, creepy stuff does help me cope, so I'll give it a shot. Natsuki and MC are standing around outside. You done already, too? Yeah, my cure is super short. Only took me like a minute. Yeah, same here. Hey, MC. What is it? Can you keep a secret? At least the music tried to transition out of that time. Like, a really important secret. Why, are you tearing up? Well, of course, Natsuki, but now I'm kind of tough of worry. Uh, the way you said that was really unsettling. Well, it's not as bad as all that, I guess. It's just something that makes me worry I'm a bad person. Will you promise not to tell anyone if I can vent it to you? I'll even release you that you owe me in exchange for me keeping quiet about your mushy Sayori home. And about you liking her. I do not like Sayori. I mean, I do, but not like... We're not boyfriend and girlfriend. Of course not. Look, Natsuki. I'll keep your secret, whatever it is. And I'll still do what I promised in exchange for you keeping my secret. Honestly, it sounded kind of fun anyway. I'm your friend, and if it'll help to get it off your chest, I'm happy to talk about whatever. Thanks, MC. You're a pal. So the situation is like this. Recently I've gotten in good with some of the popular girls because it turns out they're really into gossip and ragging on other people. And that's really easy to manipulate, I've learned. And even in talking to them about that kind of gossipy stuff, so far as I have, it kind of makes me feel gross and evil. But the feeling of being like liked and popular by a bunch of people is really nice. It's like, it almost makes you feel like you're living with purpose. But at the same time, I hate myself for loving that feeling at the cost of not being a good person. Or at least, not what I consider to be a good person. Recently, my feelings about this have gotten pretty weird. Like, I love being sort of popular, or at least not unpopular. I enjoy hanging out with the popular girls and laughing and joking. But I also kind of feel like I hate them, and I'm mad at myself. And recently, the, the stuff they've been at, talking about has made me really angry. Sometimes I feel like I want to punch them in the face. And I wonder if they'll try to make me cross some line I'm not comfortable with. And worse, I don't know what I'd do if they did. I don't want to be a bad person. I don't want to pick up a shitty group of friends and lose a bunch of real friends like you guys. But, but at the same time, I feel like I'm starting to depend on the good feelings I get from people liking me. I don't know what would happen to me if I lost that. I don't know what I would feel like. I'm scared of it. <laughs> Fuck. And, and I guess I'm dependent on bullshit like this because... Because... Because the whole fake reality thing is kind of getting to me. I don't know how I'm supposed to deal with it. It makes me feel like everything is pointless. And I'm dreading having to go through all that stuff with being called president again because of that awful hollow feeling. And losing myself on the whole being popular thing has helped me get away from it. Not if I lose it. I feel like I'd just be staring into a hole, you know? I don't know how else to cope right now. I also don't want to blow up the good stuff I have in my life because I'm being superficial. I know my life is really good and real on some actually important level. You, you guys are the best friends I've ever had. I just don't know what to do. It doesn't always seem like all this is worth it. Sorry, I didn't mean to cause a scene. 
That's a lot to deal with, Natsuki. And it's not like you let yourself seem so vulnerable or sad. Well, I'm not sure what I can do about it. But I do know one thing. I know that we can all trust you. And that you can trust yourself. To do the right thing. Whatever that is. I haven't been friends with you as long as some of the others. But I know that being fake just isn't your style. I think you'll find a way to keep those people in check without selling out your principles. And if you can't, I don't expect you to put up with them. Anyone who makes you feel uncomfortable or unsafe, well, I wouldn't want to be that person. So I think you don't need to worry about being a bad person or a bad friend, popular or not. As for you filling a void in yourself with being popular, I don't really know what to tell you about that. I sort of had the same feeling, but it just hasn't been as big a deal to me. But I don't think feeling popular at school will fix it, you know. Especially not with a bunch of vapid NPCs like those girls clearly are. At least not for very long. Popularity is kind of a shallow thing, thank you. Have you tried talking to Monica about this? She's probably got a lot of insight into coping with that empty feeling. No, I haven't talked to her about it. I'm worried for her. Sometimes she seems like she's a lot worse off than me and I don't want to hurt her. Well, maybe give it a try. I bet she could help you more than I could. It might even help her to know what some or that someone else is it might even help her to know that someone is dealing with the same crap she is. I guess both your problems kind of have the same answer. And that's that you should trust your friends to be able to help you. And to be able to trust you back. And maybe not so much me, because I'm kind of a dead screw-up sometimes. But I do the best I can. The others do too. Thanks, MC. You're probably right. Sorry for losing my shit earlier. It's just been a hard couple of weeks for me is all. And hey, I don't think you're a dense screw-up, you know? At least not all of the time. Come on, let's go back. We'll probably be starting soon. I mean, you're, you're definitely dense all the time, but you're not a screw-up all the time, just so you know. Of course. The club has assembled around Yuri's dinner table. Okay, everyone. Looks like we've all finished writing, and we've also all finished the soup. That was delicious, Sayori and MC. Thank you. You're welcome. Sayori, this is your day, so why don't you go first? Sure thing. Secret to show. The caterpillar cocoons with a quiet joy. It has a secret. Oh, I really like this one. It gets across that wonderful anticipation when you have a really cool secret that you're waiting to reveal. And it does it with a very eloquent metaphor. I really like it too. What inspired this? If I told that, I wouldn't be keeping the secret. So there is something she's keeping secret. I'm really impressed by how pithy this poem is. It really gets its point across clearly and concisely. And it's so beautiful too. I'm very proud of you, Sayori. Who's next? I might as well get mine out of the way. At rest, not at rest. Asleep, I hear them. A soft noise of distant cars, tracking as I sleep. I think I kind of get what this one is going for. It's like that feeling when you're settled in and you still hear other people driving around at night. And the whole world's kind of going on around you, something like that. Something like that. I think I understand the feeling that you're going for. But it's always one that's felt a little alienating to me. It makes me feel like a hermit crab wanted to pull into her shell and keep the world out. One of the downsides of living next to a street, I guess, it makes you long for somewhere isolated and quiet. I also feel kind of disconnected from this one. It definitely seems like there's really some feeling there's that or there that's poignant to you, but I don't feel like I can get it up or get at it. Probably how all of you guys feel about my poems. No matter how arty or abstract you make your poems, it's still kind of dumb to write them if no one can actually get anything out of them. What if I artsy? Oh, which is Monica's writing tip of the day, I guess. Capital place them. But my poems to violate that rule, I think. Well, not all of them. But sometimes I do read your poems and feel like I'm looking at an untranslated language. Like, I know something very meaningful is being said, and I don't know what. Usually I feel like that's because I failed at understanding them, not because you wrote it in a way that no one can understand. I really like your haiku, MC. Really? What about it? Um, you wrote it. Um, I really like the style of it. I don't know how else I could explain it. Should explain it. Who's the way to go next? Monsky, maybe? Eh, sure, why not? Spider. Spider kills a fly. But the spider's not evil. It's just a spider. I feel like spiders are a recurring theme for you. You use them as a stand-in for stuff that's externally or superficially icky or bad, but really isn't. You know what's weird about that? 
I actually do think spiders are pretty gross. I mean, I'm not terrified of them or anything, but I actually do think they're pretty icky. Yeah, spiders suck. Maybe examining that feeling of being icked out by something that hasn't done anything wrong to you is what I'm into. Although here, the spider is harming something. It's killing and presumably eating the fly. And that probably seems evil enough to the fly. But the poem was right, it's not the spider that's evil. It's just the way nature is, and that's always seemed pretty evil to me. Just for the world to exist and for life to exist, there has to be constant suffering as everything eats itself constantly. Constant, constantly. It's actually kind of depressing. Um, anyway, now that I've once again thoroughly derailed the conversation, somewhere incredibly disheartening, what's to go next? I'll go. The Literature Club. About my best friends. Food, laughter, my soul is warmed. Blanketed by care. I think I know what this one's about. Yay! We love you, Yuri! Thanks, Yuri. It's really nice to know you've helped give a feeling like that to someone. Of course. In terms of the poetry, it's very straightforward for a Yuri poem. But I must admit, it does make me feel warm and loved and part of the wonder of the second family. Let's see, what did you think? It's kind of mushy, but I agree with Monica. You guys really do feel like a second family sometimes. Sorry, it was a great idea for us to come here. Of course it was! Monica, you're the last one to go! Okay, here you go. Ominous and something or other. Fears. Break my poisoned pen. The ink covers the whole page, blackening my world. Ah, oh, the pen again. Usually in Monica's poetry, her pen represents her ability to alter reality unnaturally. But I can't quite figure out what is happening here. Even assuming that, it's definitely unsettling. Though, of course, I've been known to be fond of unsettling poems. I kind of get it. I think it's about Monica's fear of that very power. But is it about Monica's fear of the power itself? Or her fear of losing or misusing that power, maybe? I think it's about Monica's need for control. I get how you feel, Monica. It's probably still pretty scary for you dealing with all this. But I think it's very brave that you're willing to share it with us. Thanks, everyone. I guess all that's left is to answer some emails, and then we'll call it a day. Uh, I leave Yuri to her giant pile of snacks and full of medicine. I'm sure I'll get through all this eventually. In the next ten years, for sure. Um, I don't have a computer down here, though. We'll have to set up in my room. And let's head up! I actually need to stop the recording for now, because I need to do a little bit of a shorter set, because I adjusted my timetable and recorded DDLC two days early. I only need five episodes to cover the gap instead of seven. So that's it for now. We'll pick up with more of this next time. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you then. Bye bye.